This is the first topic of Chapter 9, The Earth System, and Structure of the Earth. The Earth System is an integrated system, that consists of four main Earth components. The first component is, Atmosphere, which is the air zone of the Earth. The second component is, Hydrosphere, which is the water of the Earth. The third component is, Geosphere, which is the rock, and soil zone of the Earth. The fourth component is, Biosphere, which is the life zone of the Earth. This four main components of the Earth, will be detailed in the coming part of the lesson. The first component of Earth system, the atmosphere, it is the air zone of the Earth. This is the air zone, that covers the entire surface of the Earth. It contains oxygen, that essential for all living thing. And carbon dioxide, which is essential for photosynthesis of green plants. The second component of Earth system is, hydrosphere, it is the water zone of the Earth. It includes all the waters on the Earth's surface. Such as lakes and seas, and sometimes including water over the Earth's surface, such as clouds. About 71% of the Earth's surface, is water covered. And, the amount of water in the hydrosphere, remains the same over the time. Because, they are constantly recycled, through the water cycle process. The third component of Earth system is the geosphere, this is the rock, and soil zone of the Earth. It is the soil parts of the Earth, that include Volcanoes, rocks, minerals, coal and oil, and other mineral resources. The fourth component of Earth system is the biosphere, it is the life zone of the Earth. Biosphere is the life zone, that's of the all kind of living things. Life zone, is the zone that consists of all kind of living things, such as plants, animals, microorganisms. The interaction between the four spheres, has made up today's Earth. Which has a suitable condition, for all living things to survive. Now, we will talk about the atmosphere stratification. Atmospheric stratification, describes the structure of the atmosphere. At which, it dividing the atmosphere, into five distinct layers. The first layer of atmosphere is, troposphere. It is about 0 to 13 kilometers, from the Earth's surface. The second layer is, stratosphere. It is located at 13 to 15 kilometers, from the Earth's surface. The third layer of atmosphere is, mesosphere. It is located at 80 to 80 kilometers, from the Earth's surface. The fourth layer of atmosphere is, thermosphere. It is located at, 80 to 480 kilometers, from the Earth's surface. The fifth layer of atmosphere is, exosphere. It is located at, 480 kilometers and above, from the Earth's surface. This five distinct layers of the atmosphere, will be detailed in the coming section of the lesson. We first talk about the first layer of the atmosphere, the troposphere layer. The troposphere layer, is the closest layer of atmosphere to the Earth's surface. This is in the region of, 0 to 13 kilometers, from the Earth's surface. This is an unstable zone, due to the formation of winds, rain, clouds, snow, and, changes in humidity, and temperature. The temperature, and in the layer, decreases with altitude. The troposphere receives the heat, that reflected by the Earth's surface. Thus, the temperature decreases, when it is further away from the Earth's surface in the region. The second layer of the atmosphere, is the stratosphere layer. Which is located at, 13 to 50 kilometers, from the Earth's surface. This is the layer of atmosphere, without clouds. It is more stable, and suitable for the aeroplanes to fly. Stratosphere, consists of the ozone layer. Which, absorbs most of the ultraviolet rays, that are harmful to life. More light is absorbed in higher altitude. Therefore, temperature in the layer, decrease with altitude. It is 0 degrees Celsius at 50 kilometers, from the surface of the Earth. The third layer of the atmosphere is the mesosphere.
which is located in the region at 50 to 80 kilometers from the Earth's surface. Mesosphere is the coldest part of Earth's atmosphere, with temperatures below negative 90 degrees Celsius. In the mesosphere, temperature decreases as the altitude increases. Most of the meteorites are burned up here before reaching the surface of the Earth. Because there are enough gases to cause friction and create heat. The fourth layer of atmosphere is thermosphere, which is located in the region at 80 to 489 kilometers from the Earth's surface. This layer has a very high temperature, as this layer exposed to high UV ray amount from the sun, which is then converted to heat in the layer. The temperature of the layer increases with increasing altitude and can reach 1650 degrees Celsius. Air pressure is low, as the amount of gases particle is low. The gases particle in the thermosphere is ionized by solar radiation. And, it makes this layer, contains a lot of charged gas particles, ions. With this, thermosphere, also known as the ionosphere. This layer of ion, can reflect the radio waves, back to Earth. And, this layer, have been used widely in the telecommunication field, to achieve communication purpose. The formation of aurora at the north and south pole of the Earth is due to the interaction between the ions, Earth's magnetic field, and the atmospheric gases. The fifth layer of atmosphere is the exosphere. It is a region at 480 kilometers and above from the Earth's surface is the outermost layer of atmospheric and it becomes vacuum at about 700 kilometers from the earth's surface exosphere layer contains only light gases such as helium and hydrogen helium is the inner gas and it is the second element in the periodic table whereas hydrogen is the element exist as molecule in nature and Hydrogen is the first element in the periodic table, and located in group 1. Satellites are launched to, and orbit in exosphere layer, for telecommunication purpose. There is a phenomena, called, depletion of ozone layer. Where, the concentration of ozone molecules in stratosphere layer, become less concentrate. Depletion of ozone layer occurs, due to, the chlorofluorocarbon level increase in the atmosphere and causing ozone holes to develop in the Arctic and Antarctic region. The following explain how the depletion of ozone layer process occur. In first stage, CFC, the ozone depleting substances are transported into the stratosphere. They are transported by the winds after being emitted from the surface of Earth. Once in the stratosphere, the CFC release halogen atoms through photon dissociation, which catalyze the breakdown of ozone into oxygen. Ozone depletion were observed to increase as emissions of halocarbons increased. The following explain why ozone hole develop at Arctic and Antarctic. Ozone hole is referring to severe depletion of ozone layer. Arctic is at North Pole Zone, and Antarctic is at South Pole Zone. Temperature in Arctic, and Antarctic, cause polar stratospheric clouds to form. PSC liquid, and solid particles, cause the highly reactive chlorine gas, ClO to be formed. Which, catalytically destroys ozone. Without ozone layer, excessive ultraviolet rays, can reach to the Earth. Which, can cause skin cancer, cataracts, and deterioration of the human immune system. Excessive ultraviolet rays can reduce the rate of photosynthesis in the plants, thus causing global warming. The following content is about the ocean stratification. Ocean stratification describes the zone of the ocean. Ocean stratification dividing ocean into three zones by the depth of ocean which extended from the sea level. The first is surface zone, it is located in the zone at 0, 
to 200 meter, from sea level. The second is Midnight Zone, it is located in the region at 200 to 1500 meter from sea level. The third is Dark Zone, it is located in the region at 1500 meter, and below from sea level. Distribution of life species, differ with the depth of zone. The three sea zones, will be detailed in the upcoming section of the lesson. Let's first talk about the surface zone, the zone in region at, 0, to 200 meter, from the sea level. Surface zone is the ocean zone, that can be penetrated by sunlight. With the sunlight, plants able to carry out the photosynthesis. Because of this, 90% of life in the ocean, is distributed in surface zone. The second ocean zone, is called, midnight zone. Which is located in the re at 200 meter to 1500 m from the sea level. Midnight zone, is the ocean zone, that has a very limited penetration of sunlight. Less of the sea animal, can survive in low light environment. The larger sea creatures, such as, giant squid, can adapt to live, in the low light environment. Due to the lack of light, most of the living creatures in this region are black, or red. The third ocean zone, is called dark zone. Which is located in region at, 1500 meter and below, from sea level. Dark zone is the ocean zone, that have no penetration of sunlight. Most of the creatures, that live in this zone, have body that shines of glows in the dark. For example, anglerfish. This is the new topic, distribution of water on Earth. About 97% of the Earth's water, is found in the oceans. Which exists as salt water, and the rest, exists as fresh water, and distributed as Underground water Surface water in lakes, rivers, and swamps Glacier, and ice caps at the poles Water stored in the soil, in clouds, in the atmosphere, and in the body of organisms The total amount of water in the hydrosphere of the Earth, remains the same over the time Because, they are constantly recycled, through the water cycle process Now, we talk about the Earth's layers Earth is made up of three main layers. The first layer, is the crust. The second layer is, mantle. The third layer is, core. Consists of two layers, they are inner core, and outer core. This three layers, will be detailed in the following section of the lesson. The first layer is the crust. The crust is the outermost layer of the Earth, and the top part of the lithosphere. The crust is divided into two layers. Top layer is the continent, that is composed of granite. Which composed silica, and aluminium. Beneath layer, is the hard rock layer, known as basalt. Which composed silica, magnesium, and iron. The thickness of the crust, is about, 3 to 60 kilometers. The temperature of the crust, is less than 800 degrees Celsius. The density of the crust, is about, 2.7 to 3.0 gram per cubic centimeter. The second layer of the earth, is the mantle. The upper layer of the m is the asthenosphere layer. Which consists of semi-molten rock, due to high temperature, it is about, 1400 degrees Celsius. Mantle layer is unstable, due to the convection current, that causes the movement of the mantle. The main composition of the layer is, silica, and sulfur oxide, in liquid form. The thickness of the mantle layer is about, 10, to 2,900 kilometers. The temperature of the mantle is, 800 to 1,600 degrees Celsius. The density of the mantle is about, 3.5 to 5.5 gram per cubic centimeter. The third layer of the earth is, core. The core layers, consists of two layers. It is outer, and inner core. About the outer core. Outer core, consists of nickel, and iron, in liquid form. The thickness of the outer about, 2000 km. The temperature is about, 
3000 degrees Celsius. The density of the outer core is 10 gram per cubic centimeter. About the inner core of the Earth. Inner core consists of nickel and iron in solid form. The thickness of inner core is about 1370 km. The temperature of inner core is about 5000 degrees Celsius. The density of the inner core is 13.6 gram per cubic centimeter. In solar system, our Earth is the only home for all living organism. Earth is the only planet that is suitable to live in the solar system. Because the Earth's physical conditions are suitable to support life. Three condition make Earth suitable to support life. The first condition is temperature. Earth is the third planet in the solar system. This is not too far and too close to the sun. It make Earth not too cold and not too hot. The second condition, fresh water. Earth have enough fresh water to sustain the living thing. The third condition is Oxygen. The sun ray make the oxygen produced from photosynthesis. And the oxygen is the basic element for living thing. We must preserve the environment in order to maintain the suitable physical condition of the earth so that it would continue to host life. We have just completed the topic one of the chapter nine. The earth system and structure of the earth. 